journal Scientific Reports published that resveratrol is essentially a fasting mimicker. Okay, by looking at how that works, resveratrol may have fasting mimicking effects. So that begs the question, if we take resveratrol during a fast, do we get increased benefits? Do we get to a fasted state faster? Well, let's kind of investigate the pathways and see if this could actually be practical and be done. Today's video is sponsored by Haya. If you have kids, then you know that giving them the right kind of nutrition can be difficult sometimes. So I put a link down below to something called Haya. They are a kid's multivitamin that's sweetened with monk fruit. Okay, it's got 12 different fruits and veggies in it. It is awesome. Okay, I've been giving it to my kiddo just because it's like a treat for him. Sweetened with monk fruit, it's just fun for him. And it's something that I take too. So I know that there's a lot of parents that watch this channel just because I talk about children's health and I talk about what I do with my kids from time to time. So I wanted to make sure that I put that out there. So there's a link down below if your kid, if you're looking for a multivitamin, multivitamin that isn't like the typical sugary multivitamin, really in a league of its own, you wanna check them out. And the cool thing is because they're a sponsor on this channel, that is a 50% off link. Okay, so get 50% off your first order of Haya. And it's super fun for the kids too. Like you can decorate the bottle, all kinds of stuff. Again, thank you to Haya for the sponsorship on this channel to make sure that we can create the content that we can create. Okay, so there's been cool research out there that shows that resveratrol can essentially induce autophagy. Now I did a separate video on this and what that means is that by blocking certain things in the body, resveratrol may allow autophagy to occur more. And just to refresh, autophagy is where your cells are essentially breaking down unused organelles and unused components of the cells to be able to have a more efficient cell. So essentially when you're fasting, your cells are going to say, okay, we are running out of food, we need to make sure that we develop the most efficient process that we possibly can. We don't need this part, this part's decrepit, this part's broken down, consume it, use it for fuel, break down proteins, break down that part in the cell. That is autophagy where it's essentially refining our process and it's therefore improving efficiency. So it's a good thing and it's a benefit that we seek. Now, we want this with fasting, but it turns out we have fasting mimicking effects that come from resveratrol. So there was a study that was published in the journal Scientific Reports that found that resveratrol directly binds to the port in mTOR that ATP would normally bind to. And what that means is mTOR is what happens when we eat food. mTOR is what happens when we are trying to build muscle, when we are in the anabolic or the growth phase, right? It's virtually the opposite of fasting, virtually the opposite of autophagy. In fact, they literally inhibit each other, okay? They are literally literal opposites. So when we stop mTOR, because resveratrol binds to mTOR and essentially blocks it from doing its job, we potentially have an increase in autophagy. And we've seen this through what's called the ULK pathway in the scientific report study. I'm gonna spare you the details and the mechanistic actions because it's kind of boring and I did a different video on that. But that got me thinking like, wow, if I'm fasting, can I get to where I want to go faster by utilizing resveratrol? Well, let's take a look at another study that again, I covered in another video, but it's practical here. It's published in the journal Cell Metabolism. This one's interesting because it took a look at humans, 11 humans, okay, and they had them either consume resveratrol or placebo. And this was a random blind crossover design study, so really cool study. And they found that the trans resveratrol group ended up having an increase in AMPK in their muscles. Now, what is AMPK? AMPK is the energy sensor within our body. Okay, and that energy sensor recognizes when energy demand is greater than the energy coming in, what's available. Okay, so if we are having a huge demand for energy, okay, because we're walking around, we're alive, but available energy is not high because we're not eating, well, that causes AMPK to go up. It's an energy sensor and it's recognized that and it said, uh-oh, we have a problem here. So what does it do? It triggers all kinds of processes to give the body fuel. It releases fats from the tissue. It releases uh, glycogen. It releases carbohydrates from the liver so that our body has the ability to function. Okay, but it can also trigger, you guessed it, autophagy. Okay, so in this particular study, we saw resveratrol increased AMPK. Okay, that means it's almost literally putting us in a fasted state. So what would happen if you took resveratrol during a fast? So we have to answer the question like, will it break a fast? No, it shouldn't, okay? Even a trans-resveratrol form, it is not going to be the actual 
plant or the actual component of red wine itself. We're looking at a very isolated component, very isolated, like transverserotol, very isolated isomer, right? So it's not going to break a fast, but is it going to add extra benefit? It's not going to necessarily put you deeper into a fast, but one of the things that you could suggest from all the data is that maybe it'll get you there a little bit faster. Okay, so normally what we have to do is we have to go through our standard sort of few hours of fasting before the body starts to recognize that there's an energy deficit, right? We have all kinds of fuel that our body burns through first. Our body will a lot of times burn through our, our glucose that's in our bloodstream, what we ate first. Then it will start to break down uh, glycogen that's in the liver. Then it will start to break down some muscle tissue in terms of gluconeogenesis and some other things. And then AMPK will be like, wait a minute, we got to do something about this. So perhaps, and this is somewhat speculation, taking resveratrol towards the beginning stages of a fast might be able to upregulate AMPK a little bit faster. So especially if you're doing shorter fasts and you're trying to replicate the benefits of a longer fast, you could be getting something out of this. Okay, so if you're normally fasting 16, 20 hours, and maybe, and this is purely hypothetical here, so don't take it to the bank, I'm just using it as an example, maybe you're trying to get the benefits of a 24 or 30 hour fast, but you're just doing your regular shorter fast. Perhaps by elevating AMPK and potentially blocking mTOR, you allow this to happen faster and earlier in your shorter fasting periods. So it's a very interesting thing to toy around with. Now, I caution you from using high amounts of resveratrol all the time during a fasting period, and here is why. Okay, you can still have specific localized activation of mTOR in the muscle tissue. This is important because like, let's say you're fasting and you're doing a weightlifting workout. You can still reap the benefits of that weightlifting workout because you can have a localized activation of mTOR in the muscle, still triggering a growth response in the muscle, or at least, you know, preservation, not necessarily growth, but at least preservation and to keep that muscle relevant so the body doesn't actively break it down. It keeps it relevant. Okay, well, that's something that we want to maintain. And we could make the argument that if resveratrol inhibits mTOR, it could inhibit it even at that localized way, in that localized way, meaning that maybe you're negating the effects of a workout during your fasting period. So what I would suggest is resveratrol is good for someone that is maybe not into working out as much during their fast. Maybe they're trying to seek more of the restorative effects, more of the autophagy effects, more of the potential longevity effects of fasting. That might be the person that's going to benefit from utilizing resveratrol during a fast, at least at a higher amount. Okay. And for those of you that are wondering that you, if you have to take resveratrol with food, well, there's a study that was published in the International Journal of Clinical Pharmaceuticals and Therapeutics that demonstrated that all food did is delay the plasma, like, increase, like how long it took for the plasma increase of uh, resveratrol to get up. So it really doesn't seem to matter. Some people claim it needs to be taken with food. Some people claim that it's better fasted. It seems when I look at the research, I don't find any difference, six in one, half a dozen in the other. So I hope that this gave you a little bit of benefit and something that you can try out. I'll see you tomorrow.